It's that time of year again, pumpkin season, and I decided to try something new, make pumpkin soap. You could get canned pumpkin for this, but I wanted to make some pureed pumpkin fresh, so I picked up a pumpkin and did just that. If you want to see how this turns out, plus some tips along the way if you want to make your own pumpkin soap, then keep watching. The first step is chopping this pumpkin up into pieces. I laid a towel down for the mess and also to keep the pumpkin from slipping. I was a little worried this would be difficult, but I was pleasantly surprised to find how easy it was to cut into this pumpkin rind. If you cut a pumpkin lengthways, you should manage to get pieces out pretty easily. I did this for the whole pumpkin, avoiding the stem as it's pretty tough to cut through. So you're probably wondering, why pumpkin soap? Like with most vegetable purees, sugars in pumpkin soap add to a bar's lather and bubbles. Pumpkin is also packed with antioxidants and vitamins A and C which help with brightening skin. Once I cleaned off the seeds and the stringy bits, I roasted the pumpkin in the oven for about 45 minutes. You can see how my fork easily pierces the pumpkin flesh. I let this cool down a little bit before removing the pumpkin meat from the skin. I know I'm using a fork and knife here, but I eventually used my hands to pull the meat away from the skin. It was way faster that way. Once all of the skin is gone, then I use my food processor to puree all of the pumpkin meat. Because my processor is really small, it took some time to puree all of the pumpkin meat, but once I did, this is how much I ended up with. It's a lot of puree. I'm actually only using 3 tablespoons of this for my soap, so if you guys have any ideas for what to do with leftover pumpkin puree, let me know in the comments. I have lots of it. <laughs> so with my pumpkin puree acquired, I set about melting my butters and hard oils. I'm using a refined, bleached, and deodorized coconut oil here. Coconut oil adds amazing big bubbles to soap. I'm also using my Presto Pot to melt everything quickly. Next, I'm using palm oil. Like coconut, palm adds nice bubbles, but it also adds a nice hardness to my soap that I really like. Next up is shea butter. This also adds a hardness to the bar, but it also adds a lovely conditioning element to the soap. Now that all my hard oils and butters are weighed, I let my Presto Pot do its thing and melt everything down. I was also making another two loaves of soap, which is why it looks like there's a lot of oils and butters in there. I love this Presto Pot for soap making since it can melt a lot of oils and butters super quickly and easily. I purchased mine from Amazon and have a link to it in my description box below if you want to check it out. Melting all of this literally took 20 minutes and I only set it to warm. This thing is amazing. I especially love the spout that dispenses the melted oils and butters quickly and easily into my measuring cup. It's so convenient. When it comes to adding pumpkin puree, there's a few ways you can do this. I chose to add the puree to my oils. I also read that you should remove the amount of puree from your water as it's meant to replace it. I meant to do that, but totally forgot and I ended up soaping at my normal water level. Stay tuned to see if that was a mistake or not. <laughs> First up is olive oil, and this is one of my favorite oils to use for soaping. I get mine from Costco and it's a blend of regular and extra virgin olive oil. Another oil I love to use is hemp seed oil. This is a beautiful, fast absorbing oil that I like to use in pretty much anything. If hemp seed isn't your thing, then you can use another light, fast absorbing oil like sweet almond oil, avocado oil, or apricot kernel oil. The last soft oil I'm using is castor oil, and this adds big, lovely bubbles to soap. You definitely don't want to use too much as the soap can end up sticky and soft. When all of the oils are measured out and combined, I then add some kaolin clay for slip. 
Without the clay, my soap felt squeaky, for lack of a better word. The clay really helps the soap glide smoothly on my skin, so I added to all of the soaps that I make. I use a stick blender to break up these clay clumps and also to make sure that the puree is nicely incorporated and there are no globs of it. Chunks of puree can lead to it molding in soap, so make sure you're blending everything thoroughly. Next, I'm getting my fragrance oil ready. For this pumpkin soap, I'm using Pumpkin Cranberry by Fizz Fairy. I'm obsessed with this beautiful fall scent, but you can only use up to 3.45% of it in soap, so I'm adding some orange essential oil to help with the scent. This pumpkin, orange, and cranberry combo is heavenly. I, I love it so much. Next, I pour the lye and water solution into my oils and use my stick blender to get this into a fine trace. Because of the pumpkin, I wasn't sure how the soap was going to behave, so I was being extra cautious. I like working with the soap in parts, so even though I had no colors planned for the soap, I still split the batter in half to make it easier to manage. I poured half my fragrance oil into this half and stick blended to get it all incorporated. Like I mentioned, I was being extra cautious, so I only stick blended for a bit before I poured it into my long soap mold. This tall and skinny mold is by Winston & Walter, hands down, my favorite soap mold company. This is how I get the tall and skinny look to my bars, which you'll see at the end of the video. So that was the first pour, here is the second half. Again, nothing fancy here, no colors, just adding the fragrance oil, stick blending it, and then pouring it into the mold. I did start to notice that the soap was accelerating a bit on me here, much faster than the first half. Nothing to get alarmed over, just enough to keep me on my toes. I chose not to add colors because I'm expecting the soap to go brown on me over time because of the pumpkin cranberry fragrance oil that has vanilla in it. With fragrance oils that have vanilla in it, it's best to work with it into your design instead of fighting it with vanilla stabilizer. You can really see the acceleration here as the soap gets harder to pour. But again, nothing too crazy. I've worked with a lot worse. I actually like working with soap this exact consistency. It's just the right texture to create my signature tops. I create the tops using a spoon, making waves down both sides of the soap. I then add the rest of the soap on top. I make careful swirls using a metal chopstick and then clean down the sides of the soap mold. Because of the lack of color and the eventual browning, I decided to add some flair by using some beautiful biodegradable glitter. This is Peach Nectar Bio Glitter from Fizz Fairy. I use a small measuring spoon to dust it on. To represent the cranberry note, I also used Carnival Bio Glitter by Fizz Fairy, which has that deep magenta glitter in there. It's just beautiful. I have both of these linked in my description box below if you want to check that out. So here is the freshly poured cranberry orange pumpkin soap with fresh pumpkin puree. And you can see how the magenta, baby pink, and gold glitter really help to make the top of the soap really pop and shine. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. And when this soap turns a darker brown, which it will because of the vanilla content and the pumpkin fragrance oil, it's still gonna have that punch of glitter on top that will make it look really, really cute and on brand. And I was actually surprised that I was able to get it into the mold and everything looks good. But the thing with pumpkin soaps is you have to watch them because they actually might volcano on you. They might get really, really hot. So what you can do is pop these guys in the fridge or the freezer to keep things cool. Um, this is too big of a mold for me to do that. I'm just going to um, put it by my air conditioning unit <laughs> to keep it from, from uh, getting too hot and then hopefully that'll keep it from volcanoing because of those natural sugars in the pumpkin. You really want to keep an eye out for that. But yeah, as for the pour, a pretty successful pour and I can't wait to cut it tomorrow even though there's no swirl in the middle. Who knows, maybe this 
maybe I'll be surprised by something. Sometimes I am actually, but that's when I'll come back is when um, this is all set up and fingers crossed, it'll look like this, a dry version of this, a solid version of this and not a volcano. <laughs> So here is the soap the next day and as you can see I took away the sides of this mold so that it wouldn't over insulate the soap because it was getting really hot and I even loosened the sides a little bit once I saw that it had set up and that at least prevented a volcano but we're not out of the woods yet we need to cut into it to see whether or not we got any holes inside of the soap which are caused by overheating but in terms of color it's holding its color really really well. Cranberry Pumpkin does say that there is vanilla in it although it doesn't say how much but for some fragrance oils with vanilla in it you can really see the darkness as of the next day so it can't be that much. To show you what I'm talking about here's a cut of my Muskoka wood soap that uses a fragrance oil with vanilla in it. You can really see the dark outline on the soap. This shade will eventually creep onto the whole soap over time. But yeah, it looks pretty orange still. Now without further ado, let's cut into this and show you what it looks like. For those curious, these are Winston and Walter molds. My favorite type of soap mold. They are such good quality molds and give me the most beautiful shaped bars. And unmolding soap is so easy. Of course that can depend on your recipe, but my recipe is really good. It releases from the silicone very cleanly. All you have to do is loosen the sides like I did right there, and then the soap just pops right out. So to pull it out, you just pull the back of the mold away, and then the soap forward. And you have a beautiful soap log that smells like pumpkin and orange. Gorgeous. And judging from the outsides of it, I don't see any signs of heat holes or heat damage, so let's cut into it and see. So we're gonna start by cutting off the ends. I like making little sample soaps out of these guys. I'm gonna set that aside. And do our first cut. Wow. <laughs> so I did this soap all in one color. When I do this, I often get two different colors um, from the two different pores. And I might have to do with the different amounts of fragrance oil, because I don't really have a precise number, I just kind of eyeball it. And it looks like we what we have here is the hint of a ghost swirl, but in that orange color. does add an element of interest to these bars. That one looks really interesting. Just the very hint of a ghost swirl. Based on these first few cuts, I think I can safely say that we might be in the clear for heat holes in the inside of the soap. In such an interesting pattern. And this will darken a little bit, although by how much, I'm not sure. I'll do an update once these guys are fully cured. So here are the cut bars, and I think that little touch of sparkle in the top looks absolutely gorgeous with these pumpkin bars. I even got a little bit of a design here unintentionally, but I'm very pleased about the fact that I don't have any heat tunnels in the middle, and also the fact that it looks like the puree that I put in was perfectly 
blended into the rest of my oils because I don't see spots, which is awesome. And one thing to note about puree is that you really want to blend it in as good as you can because if you do have clumps of pumpkin in your soap, those could grow mold over time. So these soaps look absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy how they turned out and really excited to add them to my line for this fall season. So that is how I made pumpkin soap. Let me know if this is how you guys do it in the comments below. I know there's a million ways to do it, but this particular one where I add the puree to the oils, this one turned out really well. If you enjoyed this, leave a like or follow to catch all of the fun fall projects I have lined up. To get the recipe and steps, that's all on my Patreon. Speaking of which, thank you to my amazing patrons. Your generosity means the world to me, especially these guys, my bubble BFFs right here on the screen. It's your support that helps me do what I do, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks so much to Fizz Fairy for their amazing fragrances. I have links to all of that in my description box. Check them out. They have tons of soap making and bath bomb making supplies on their website. And the best part is that they're Canadian. Thank you to you for watching till the very end. Until the next one, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and keep making beautiful things like pumpkin soap with fresh pumpkin puree. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.